Hi, I'm Dr Jamie Halliwell and in this digital short I'm going to be talking about my PhD research and part of this was centred on mapping and characterising spaces of Eurovision fandom. It's worth noting that Eurovision has often been represented as a global coming out in support of gender and sexual diversity. Um, much of the literature has centred on the gay men's love of the event, and it has, amongst some cultural commentators and homophobic cultural commentators, been dismissed as trite and not serious culture. As these feelings towards the contest are shared by some mainstream media outlets, uh, such as right-wing pol publications, right-wing politicians, and wider society, particularly in the UK, they can lead to a shaming of Eurovision fans. Hence, Eurovision-related events and activities and the internet and social media platforms are vital for the co-production of both fan and sexual identities, communities and networks. I identified and explored in my thesis a broad range of spaces where Eurovision fans practice their fandom. Uh, the Eurovision is not limiting its spatiality to the actual event and venue, but it incorporates a dynamic range of fan spaces across the online and offline divide that provide regular and continuous engagement with the event. Uh, thus, I conceptualise Eurovision fandom as, to adopt Van Dyke's term, a digital ecosystem, which I use to describe how Eurovision fan practices are interconnected between internet and social media platforms and offline environments that permeate each other. This mapping also includes the actual Eurovision event uh, and its associated venue and fans' digital practices. Each different space can be characterised as a microsystem that operates within a wider part of the digital ecosystem of Eurovision fandom. These spaces interconnect and are shaped by and through technology. Given that there is such a diverse range of fan spaces online and offline, it provides fans with many opportunities to express, to express and negotiate fan, their fan and sexual identities. So let's just take a couple of examples from this Venn diagram, which highlights some of the, some of the examples which make up the digital ecosystem of Eurovision fandom. Social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter have their own sets and designs of software and sets of operations, rules and norms that play an integral part in shaping identity and facilitating fan engagement. These generally sit at the centre of the diagram as they are used to share and connect, a, connect around Eurovision content and develop networks around attending Eurovision events, uh, such as Euroclub and the Eurovision You Decide After Party. These social media platforms allow fans to engage with different audiences. Twitter, for example, enables mass self-communication and produces Eurovision fan spaces where fans can determine the limit and the outness of their fan and sexual identities. There are complex mobilities in which Eurovision fans practice their fandom and establish connections and networks. So in essence, Eurovision fandom blurs the distinctions between the online and the offline. And I'd like to just explore one particular space in a bit more detail, that's the Eurovision Press Centre. So the Eurovision Press Centre is a unique fan space uh, that is a hybrid, digitally networked and physical space, uh, and I theorise this as a code space in itself, that allows fans to get close to the event and undertake a journalist role by reporting on the different happenings of the event. So for example, uh, Eurovision rehearsals, artist interviews and press conferences. It brings together the online and the offline, the fan and the professional, and it is also a workspace that blurs fan and professional distinctions. It is an exclu exclusive space where fans who participate in international fan community outlets apply for press accreditation to be subsequently granted access to the venue in order to report on the contest using internet-enabled objects. Usually fans use the space to continue to produce their own media content, which is then shared through their community outlets website and social media accounts. These digital processes transform the Eurovision fan experience, which contributes to the formation of fan hierarchies and the collapsing and reinforcing of Eurovision fan and Eurovision fan work identities. Fan participation in the space helps reconfigure their fan identities and respects of spatial practices. So participation with fan community outlets can take place anywhere with an internet connection. However, the professional expectations of Eurovision fans place limits on the expression of gender and sexual identity. So for example, in particular the expression of drag identities as fans believe such performances do not conform to the press centre's work environment. 
So in this talk, I've explored the digital ecosystem of Eurovision fandom and identified how Eurovision fandom is interconnected between the internet, social media platforms and offline spaces. Uh, however, the global impact and indeterminate situation around COVID has placed greater, emph greater emphasis on the importance of digital Eurovision fan practices. So for example, in 2020, the contest uh, was due to be held in Rotterdam and was cancelled and postponed until 2021. Some Eurovision events were taken wholly online. So for example, there was a Spanish Eurovision pre-party in April 2021 which featured the Eurovision artists performing live uh, from their homes via video conferencing software. Uh, Eurovision, the Eurovision Press Centre uh, can also now be attended remotely and in person with access to an online press centre. This is a platform that was developed in 2021. Um, however, Eurovision fan events are making their return to in-person attendance and live performances from Eurovision uh, and live performances from the Eurovision 2022 artists and those from yesteryear. So, for example, the London Eurovision Party um, has been hosted in a new venue uh, since the previous venue, Café de Paris, was permanently closed because of COVID. And also Eurovision, and Eurovision in Amsterdam has also made a comeback. So, social media and the internet will continue to play a vital role in accessing Eurovision-related content and media and connecting with Eurovision fans. Thanks for listening.